Okay, today we're going to go over some uh, basic uh, photo editing uh, post-processing um, using uh, Apple's Aperture 3. Um, if you don't have the program, you can actually download a free trial um, at Apple's website. Uh, just go to Apple's website, look for the uh, Introducing Aperture 3 tab, click on that, and then you can uh, click on the button that says Free Trial, and you can download a 30-day free trial um, of Aperture 3. You just have to provide a first and last name and email address uh, and they'll send you a link to download as well as a serial number for the trial. So assuming you've done that and you have uh, Aperture installed already, um, go ahead and either uh, navigate to Aperture on your dock or in your applications folder. Um, I have it on my dock so I'll just click on it on my uh, dock to get started. And uh, today we're just going to be doing a basic, really basic uh, post-processing workflow that I'd go through with uh, any of my photos, um, you know, as far as getting them ready to be published or put on the internet or whatever. So here's a TIFF file of a photo I took uh, the other day. Um, and we're just going to do some basic work uh, on color correction, um, enhancements, sharpening, and uh, straightening. So First things first, I can see that this photo uh, is a little crooked. So using this little tool right here, uh, it's the Select Straighten tool. You can either uh, push G or just push on the button right there and you can use it. Um, and as soon as you click on the photo and start to move the mouse up and down, you'll get a grid uh, to help you uh, straighten out the photo. Now what I do is I usually use, uh, with the line as a guide, I pick a landmark uh, in this case it's a building, so I'll pick a landmark on the building like these balconies here and make sure I straighten the line uh, that I've chosen uh, with one of the balconies so that I know that the photo is uh, sh as straight as it can possibly be. So that looks about right right there. Just uh, let go and it'll, it'll do the rest of the work for you. So next thing is we're going to go over to the adjustments uh, section and we're just going to do some basic uh, adjustments. So um, you can use the presets um, that come with the program. I find that they always tend to uh, overdo things a bit or overexpose the photo. So I tend not to use those very often. But you know, if you want to use them as a starting point, you know that's up to you. Go ahead and go ahead and do that. Uh, first things first is I'll adjust uh, the exposure, which can be found right here and I just kind of play with it. I'm actually happy with the exposure on this photo so I'll just play with it a little bit to show you what it does. Um, you can go as far as uh, two stops in each direction um, but I'm gonna leave leave that actually back where it was. So um, The next next option is recovery um, which is if you know you're uh, you have a skies or highlights that are a bit blown out. You can try to recover some of them using the recovery tab. Um, overall, I'm relatively happy with this photo, so I'm, I'm going to leave that alone too. Uh, you can adjust black point and brightness, um, but the big one here is uh, the enhance section. Go ahead and check the box uh, to use it, and you can mess with uh, contrast and uh, definition, saturation, and vibrancy. Today we're just going to be using, uh, well, actually, we'll use all four. So I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to, to punch up the photo a little bit, just, just a tiny bit. Um, and then add some, uh, if you see the definition tab, um, is really good at adding extra definition in the photos. Um, if you need to, you can use the loop uh, to uh, look at a section 100% so you can see the changes uh, more clearly. Um, I, I can eyeball it pretty well, so I don't I don't really need to do that. Um, I'm definitely going to increase a little bit of saturation on this, get some of the color to punch a little bit more. Uh, you don't want to overdo the saturation, or it'll make the photo look fake. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're adjusting, um, and we'll add a little bit of vibrancy. Um, If you want to uh, fix your highlights or your shadows at all, you can do that as well. Um, I think I'm going to brighten up uh, or darken the highlights just a tad so you can get those clouds at the top to come out be a little more defined. 
Um, and the shadows, I feel pretty good about. I might make a slight adjustment right there. And then uh, if you need to adjust color, um, you can use the auto adjustment or you can pick uh, each color and go um, color by color and adjust the hue, saturation, luminance, and range, which is all found right here. Um, or you can just use levels. I usually use levels and uh, find that I'm pretty happy with that. So next, uh, you want to sharpen. Uh, this is uh, building, so we can actually use quite a bit of sharpening. Uh, normally, I wouldn't do it too much. I'm probably going to do a radius uh, of about one intensity, uh, probably up in the 0.7 range. Um, you might have to zoom in at 100% to really see the changes you're making there with the uh, sharpen tool. But again, you don't want to over sharpen, otherwise it'll be really noticeable uh, and it'll make the photo look uh, fake. So anyway, uh, that's about it. Um, the next thing I, only next thing I need to do is uh, set up this photo for export so I can use it on my website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to uh, Aperture, uh, Presets, Image Export, uh, select JPEG. Um, I want to do a 10 by uh, 1024 by 1024 image size um, and that won't alter the size of the photo or the, the constraints of the photo. It'll just make the photo fit within those uh, guidelines. So that's a good place to start. Uh, select 72 dpi. That's perfectly fine for a web photo. If you were going to print, you'd want 300 or more, but 72 for web is, is perfectly fine. So now that that's all set, ready to go, uh, click OK. And then right click on the photo and select Export Version. Select where you want to export. In this case, I'm going to export to the desktop, uh, export preset, and uh, I'm going to name it. Go to uh, select name format, go to custom name uh, with counter if you, if you like. And I'm going to name it uh, Bioto in Temple and select import versions. And that should be it. Now that photo should uh, appear on my desktop as soon as it's done importing, which it is right here. All right. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Please check back for more. Uh, thank you very much.